You know, I speak a lot about the Holy Spirit. I speak a lot about the power of God. I speak a lot about the anointing. I speak a lot about, about living under that, that spout, underneath the presence of God and different things like that. But I want to focus this morning, Christ and Him alone can save. Christ and Him alone can save. The life we live is all about Him. It's all about Him. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. It's time that the church allowed Jesus to do what he said he would do and for us to do what he told us to do. He never told us to build the church. He said he would build the church. But we've got all these modern great ideas on how to build the church. And really, what it, what it, when it all boils down, it's got nothing to do with building the church. It's just about gathering numbers of people. Jesus said, I will build my church. And he said, if I be lifted up. And I believe that it's all about him today. Only Jesus can save. It's all about him. Our purpose in life is not just to accumulate wealth, wealth, wealth. <laughs> Over the last three days, I've learned to keep, keep my lips shut because there's that many flies around. If you open it. I've never seen so many flies in all my life, honestly. <laughs> and even the people out there were complaining about the flies. <laughs> but we're not here just to accumulate wealth. The Word of God says, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And I believe that God wants us to get certain things in the right line, get them in the right place. Because there's things there that will take you off course. There's things that will take us away from what God is wanting to do in our lives. And seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. We need the anointing. We need the anointing so very, very much. We need to have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying in the hour that we're living in. We, we really need to have our ears fine-tuned. The Bible says it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit. Somehow or other, we've got to get these things in the right line. Jesus and Him alone can save. But there's something about the Holy Spirit and His place and what He's doing and the function that He has in the church that we've got to somehow or other allow the Holy Spirit to open up things to us, to reveal stuff to us, that we would not just be mere men and women walking through a, a life that when something like a coronavirus or something like that comes, that we just, we, we just crumble and fall. Somewhere or other, we've got to rise up and we've got to look, no weapon formed against me will prosper. Somewhere or other, the Spirit of God's got to raise that up within us. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. See, we, they're the things that have got to rise up within us. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. We haven't just written those things out there because we wanted to fill up the space. We want people to meditate on that. If the preaching's a bit boring, just read that. <laughs> if you go home with that, you've most likely gone home with heaps. Amen. <laughs> Very. <laughs> you didn't have to be so happy about that. <laughs> It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my Spirit. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. So Jesus saves and Jesus delivers. But I want you to have a look at a verse of Scripture here, a couple of verses of Scripture in the book of Jude. Jude has just got one chapter. I want to encourage you to read the book of Jude. Read it, read it, and have a look what it says here. Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to those who are called, sanctified by God the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ. When I read that word, I, I saw a peaches in a jar <laughs> that are preserved. <laughs> but they last forever. Is that correct? You know, they, they're preserved. 
I'm preserved, hallelujah. <laughs> I'm marinated. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm preserved. I, I, I'm just going to keep going on and on and on. <laughs> preserved in Jesus Christ. Mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. Now, everybody's all they're going to go home out of this message and get preserved, aren't they? Yeah. They're just going to see bottles of peach, peaches and apricots and goodness they were. Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. To contend earnestly. He says, For certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked out for this uh, condemnation. You see, things have crept in. Things have seeped in. Things have got into the gospel. This good news, the power of God, the anointing, this book that contains the, the promises of God, the power of God, the anointing of God. An enemy has crept into the church. He's crept in and he started to sow discord. He started to sow lies. He started to sow negativity. And friend, that's why we need the Holy Spirit. We need the power of God. Jesus and Him alone can save. Jesus is the Savior of the world. I cannot stand here today and honor Him more, that He would save a wretch like me, that His love and His mercy would go beyond my wildest dreams, that, that He would not just save me, but He would empower me, that He would put His hand upon our lives and raise us up, that He would want us to become a voice, to become a, a, a force to be reckoned with, that we would be the salt of the earth, that we would go out and proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord. And just as Peter the other day with that guy sitting beside him, as he could have been silent, he could have said nothing, but instead he spoke because somehow or other when the Spirit of God rises within us, it touches something on the inside, it ignites something on the inside, and we cannot be silent. It's not a time for the church to be silent. It's not, look, this is a golden opportunity. When people are talking about the coronavirus, you start talking about the power and the anointing of a risen Christ. You start talking about what Jesus said. You start talking about in Joshua, don't fear, don't be afraid, don't care. But be very, you've still got to be careful. I'm not saying be stupid. You know, I've said before that if a mosquito bites you, you're so full of the Holy Ghost that he'll fly away singing, there's power in the blood. <laughs> we had that many drunk midges out there the other day. <laughs> it's Jesus and him alone. I had to come and I had to warn you. I, I had to come. I want to, uh, you've got to contend. Friend, we're living in a time, I believe it's a very, very serious hour that we're living in. Because there's so many things that comes against the church. There's so much rubbish. There's so much, so much stuff that's, that's, that's being put, put forth that this is the way you do things. We've got to contend earnestly. We've got to cry out to God. We've got to, we've got to keep praying in tongues. We've got to keep believing Jesus. Amen. Christ and Him alone can save. I've got some sad news for you today. This church can't save you. but it can help you stay focused. Amen? I'm going to preach it, I'm going to preach it, and I know Greg will preach it, and there are others that are going to preach it from this pulpit will preach it. We've got to stay focused on Jesus and Him alone. We've got to be filled with the power of God. I don't care what people are saying today, it's Christ and Christ alone that can save. It's the power of God today that the infilling of the mighty Holy Spirit that will make me more than a conqueror, hallelujah, that will cause me to triumph over every work of Satan. And by the blood of Jesus Christ, we will be healed and we will be saved. And God will put a, something on the, an unction on the inside of us that we will just pour out of ourselves. Out of our innermost being will flow rivers of living water. The Spirit of God would rise up within us this nation of Australia, this city called the Sunshine Coast, needs a deluge of the Holy Ghost power. 
of the anointing of God. They need to know that Jesus Christ is, a Lord, is Lord. They're running around the shops today. They think that they're doing good if they've got 20 boxes of dunny paper. <laughs> How stupid can you be and still breathe? What are they going to do with that? I feel a little bit. <laughs> Listen to me. Feel a little bit, a little bit like the prophet of old. Dunny rolls will be sold for a penny. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> You've got to stay focused on Him. Stay focused on the power of God. The Holy Spirit is the spotlight that will always be focused on Jesus Christ. He will not be focused on anything else. He'll only be focused on Jesus Christ, the Son of God. His, his, his purpose is revealing Jesus Christ to the world. And He wants to do that through demonstration of power demonstrating the anointing, the, the victory, the healing, whatever it is. The Holy Spirit has got many, many purposes. But one of the, one of the uh, purposes is found in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12. His purpose is to unite the body of Christ. I want to say this today. If the Holy Spirit's purpose and everything the Holy Spirit has been sent to do, I guarantee you that the enemy will do everything he can do to bring the opposite. And so what the enemy tries to do is he tries to divide and conquer. He, try, he, he gets into families. Today there's so many Christian families that have been smashed and broken because somehow or other they've allowed a lie to get in there and it's destroyed a marriage. Whatever God is doing, the enemy will try to counterfeit and do the opposite. And that's why we've got to contend earnestly. We've got, to, we've got to believe God. We've got to trust God. We've got to somehow or other break the strongholds of the enemy. In the church, the enemy would come to try to bring this disruption and disunity and, and mess. Break the, break the purpose and the plan that God has for us. We're members, many members, but all members of one body. God is one spirit. The Holy Spirit spotlight wants to reveal, to illuminate. In Ephesians 3, 18 and 19, it says that we may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height. This is what the Holy Spirit wants to reveal to us wants to open to us. I, I, I want to say this, I know, I know, I know that there is so much more that I do not know. There's so much more about even moving in the Spirit that I do not know. There's so much more that, that God wants to do. And you see, the Holy Spirit is coming and trying to reveal things to us. But as He comes, because sometimes of our tradition, Things like that, we, we push away, we push aside. And I remember, you know, one of the things, I went to Brownsville, went all the way over to Brownsville to, to see a revival. And, I, and the first night I was there, they were talking about water baptism and stuff like that. And there were people that were already saved and already been baptized, were, were being baptized, and that was my crew. <laughs> Because when Nancy, we went to Israel, Nancy wanted to get water baptized in the Jordan, and I got mad. Oh, man, I got mad. I got angry. I said, you've been baptized once, woman. What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting there having mully grubs and, and miserable, and she's going through the waters of baptism, and she's floating around there having a glory time. Amen. You see subconsciously there's stuff that's in there that God's got to get rid of. 
God's got that lady that came out and she's seen people fall under the power and she's heard, most surely. Oh, he pushes you. I will push you. I'll jump on you sometimes. I'll try to jump into you. <laughs> I'll do whatever I can to get it into you. <laughs> oh, they push you. They do this or they do that or it's this or it's that. And I've heard different ones talk about it. But I want to tell you, I, I just know myself, my own experience. When Bob Midgley prayed for me, I didn't know what was going on. I just went out the front and he started praying for me. The power of God hit me. I got slain in the spirit and I can feel it coming on now. You can get it milking the cow, hallelujah. But I'm getting it right now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you got to get it, amen. Got to open yourself up. Subconsciously, we, we reject what God's doing. But we've got to contend earnestly for the faith, believing God, trusting God, letting God be God in our lives, that we may be able to comprehend, to understand. That's what the Holy Spirit is. There's so much more. How many people know there's so much more? Go lift up your hands and say, God, I want more. God, come on, I want more. I want more, Lord. I want more. God, I want more. God, open the more to me. Reveal the more to me. There's so much more. If we're going to touch Australia, there's so much more. We need more. Come on, do you need more? Do you need, come on, cry out to God for a few seconds. Come on, I need more. I need you more. I need you more. I need you more, Lord. I need you more. More than words can say. I need you more. These songwriters that write these songs, and they, they, they get caught up in the Spirit and they start writing songs. I need you more, more than words can say. I need you more, more than ever before. If ever we need God, we need Him now. The Sunshine Coast needs an outpouring of the Spirit now, right now. And I believe that God's getting us ready. You getting ready? <laughs> Ooh, we got ever ready Freddie up there doing the songs, hallelujah. <laughs> He's ready. <laughs> that we may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height. Man, God is so big. Bigger than any problem, amen. Bigger than any coronavirus. He's bigger than any devil. He's bigger than any demon. He's bigger than anything that the enemy can throw. He just needs the church to rise up and declare it, amen. Contend earnestly. When the enemy comes in like a flood, he said, I will raise up a standard against it. Come on, God. Come on, God. Raise us up. What do you think he's going to do? He's gonna, he wants to raise the church up. Can't just keep sitting around on our blessed assurance. Rise up. Rise up, you people of power. Rise up, you people of power. To know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. You can't work it out in your brain. That you may be filled with the fullness of God. That you may be filled, filled, <laughs> filled. Hallelujah. I want to be filled with the fullness of God. I want to say this. There's nothing deeper or higher than the knowledge of Christ. There's nothing more powerful. Jesus is our chief cornerstone in Ephesians 2.20. He's our foundation. He's our rock to know Him, not just to know about Him. Too many Christians only know about Jesus. They don't know Him. To know the power of His resurrection, to know the power of the anointing as it gets around you, to know Him, not just about Him. Only the spotlight of the Holy Spirit can reveal to us the true Christ. Something there that even in teaching and stuff like that, something's got to get caught in the realm of the Spirit. Something as, as, it, as it comes forth, and I know I've shared this a little bit before, but I believe that inbuilt inside of every one of us is that God factor that's in there. And that can only be activated by the power of God. Can only be activated by the anointing of God. 
And the anointing comes in many different ways and, and God moves in mysterious ways. And, but it's the anointing or it's the Word of God that activates and motivates something on the inside of us that causes uh, something to ignite on the inside. There was a gentleman that went to church and he sat there in the church and, and at the end of the service, at the end of the meeting, the, 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 the pastor made an altar call for salvation. And this man put up his hand and he stood to his feet Tears rolling down his face, tears coming, streaming down his face. And he walked out the front and gave his life to Jesus. And the minister there said, oh, sir, what part of my message, my message <laughs> touched your heart in such a way that you wanted Jesus? He said, pastor, he said, as a matter of fact, he said, I thought your message was boring. He said, but, he said, a little girl on the floor was coloring in her coloring in book. And on the top of that page, it says, God loves you. He said, I read those words, and as I read those words, something touched me. Because you see, I'm a broken man. I haven't had love. I don't know what love is. I don't know. I've been this, and I've done all that. And he said, as that came, he said, my eyes just filled with tears. And tears began to stream down my face. And when you made the altar call to come, I came. See, God moves in mysterious ways. It's, but there's something inside of us that's got to be activated, got to be motivated, got to be, got to be, something's got to ignite it so that we can become who God wants us to become. Amen. Jesus Christ is our chief cornerstone. Jesus is only the spotlight of the Holy Spirit can reveal to us the true Christ, the Christ of the Bible. That's who I want. And not the Jesus of religion. Jesus of religion won't really help us all that much. Ephesians 1.17 says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. We might be able to understand, comprehend who He is. The, to know the love of God. To know the love of God, friend. To know the love of God that passes all understanding. Paul strove to know Christ and the power of His resurrection. Paul strove to, to find that place, to find the love of God. Jesus is our... Je sorry... We can lose Jesus if we're just going after the natural things. They lost Jesus in the temple once. Our focus can be on ministry, the church, or success, fortune, or whatever it might be. What is it if a man should gain the whole world and lose his soul? Ephesians 4.23 says, Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Colossians 3.11 says, But Christ is all and in all. Philippians 2.5 speaks about a name, how God highly exalted him and gave him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow. The precious blood, the precious blood will never ever lose its power. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2, 9, Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered the heart of man the things which God has prepared for you, but God has revealed them to you through His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, even the deep things of God. The Spirit of God is the searchlight. He is revealing. He is the one that will reveal if we don't draw close, if we just want to sit back with our hands folded and play whatever it might be, nothing will change. But if we contend earnestly, if we start going after God, if we start moving after God, if we start drawing near to Him, He will draw near to us. He will do something, I believe, that is very, very important, very, very powerful. The new birth is more uh, miraculous even than the, uh, than the natural birth from the womb to the world. But I want to tell you the new birth takes us from the kingdom of darkness into a brand new kingdom. And that kingdom can only be revealed as a light, as a searchlight of Jesus comes on things and touches things and, and magnifies things in your mind. In 1 John chapter 5 it says, Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. 
You don't have to become some special, I don't know what sort of person. All you need to do is get born again. You get born again and God takes you out of one kingdom and he brings you into a brand new kingdom. A kingdom of God, an amazing kingdom. It's an amazing thing where the Spirit of God can speak to us, where the Spirit of God can do miracles, laying on of hands, praying for people, do whatever, whatever you want to do. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. 1 John 5, 4 and 5 says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. You believe that today? We need, sorry. God was almost being kind to you. Then I almost took two pages in once. <laughs> <laughs> who is he who overcomes the world but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Only Jesus has the key of haze and of death. Revelation 1.18. Jesus wants to give us the keys that will unlock the unseen realm. Revelation 12.11. I'm hurrying. And they could... And they overcame him, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. I've got to the page that I've been trying to get to all morning. <laughs> I was in a hurry to get to this page. We need to pray in the Spirit. We need to pray in tongues. Hallelujah. Some people might say you don't have to, but I say you need to. You speak mysteries under God. You, you edify yourself. You build yourself up. You're doing stuff. You're speaking in another language. You're speaking in the realm of the Spirit. You, you, we need to speak in tongues. Don't pray the problem. Pray the answer. Don't pray. God says your prayers weary me. Oh, Father, the flies are so bad out here. He's not interested in the flies. Oh, if only you'd get rid of the flies. Or <laughs> well, pray about this or stuff there. Friend, pray. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Father, I thank you today that I am more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. No weapon formed against me can prosper. Hallelujah. Then you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost. Father, I got power. I got. A, I am contagious. Hallelujah. <laughs> the anointing. The anointing. The anointing. The anointing. Pray, Spirit, life. But this is what I really want to say this morning. I want to love Jesus more than I ever have before. This is my motivation right now. I want to love Jesus more than I ever have before. If only we could do that. I want to worship the King like I've never worshipped before. I was watching, somebody gave me, sent me a clip of the Brownsville revival. And Kilpatrick was there. And he was the guy talking, but he said, just on an ordinary day, just like today, he was in a meeting just like today. But something happened. The glory of God came down and touched him. And he got slain in the spirit. He was so under the power of God for three months he could not even take off his own shoes and socks. Three months. His wife had to get ladies to come from the church to dress her and undress her. She was useless. I remember when the power of God came in the Sunshine Coast, Ken and some of you others might remember it. We used to carry Nancy out in the seat. And we would put, push her into the car. And then they would leave me with her. 
And, uh, and hey, hang on, I haven't got to that part yet. <laughs> she was so touched by the power of God that we had an acreage. And so I, I would drive right around the back of the house and park the car at the back door and leave her there. <laughs> and so she just... <laughs> I want to worship Jesus like I've never worshipped before. I want to love Jesus like I've never loved him before. I want to meet with Jesus like I've never met with him before. I, 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 I long, I long for, I long for the anointing to come down and touch us. The anointing to come in and minister to us. The anointing to, to, to just rest on us in a mighty way. The anointing, the anointing, the anointing, the anointing. I want to love him. I believe it's very, very important in these days that we live in, we must have an ear to hear from God. Amen. Jesus is the answer for the world today. I pray that we just haven't come to church and just to come to church, but I pray that we've come I pray today that somehow or other I could just touch something. And I pray today that, that though I'm a mere man, I pray that the words that I've spoken, some of the words that I've spoken will, will ignite something inside you. That will cause you to rise up and just start talking in tongues as loud as you want to. When somebody's there and they've got a need, you go out there and you say, I have an answer for you. That will shatter every bit of you. But you see, to know God, to know Him, to know Him, it passes natural thinking. I guarantee you, Peter, you seeing that guy get healed like that, I bet you that did more for you than it most likely did for him. Amen? Hey? It would ignite something inside of you. You're just looking for the next victim. <laughs> Amen? Looking for the next one we can pray for. Father, Father, I look... It's only you can build your house, Lord. It's only you can do that work in this thing in people's lives. It's only the Holy Spirit, the anointing, the victory that can touch somebody's heart. It's only, only you that can, can ignite something on the inside of people. I pray today all over this place, Father, that people are getting ignited. If there's anybody here today and they don't know you as Lord of their life, I pray, my God, that something on the inside of them today would say, I want, I want Jesus. Whether it's just when I said that God loved them like that man, whether it was something simple like that, you might not have remembered one word that I've spoken. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The Spirit is even greater. It's more powerful. And it can go in and touch and penetrate and, and, and cause somebody to rise up. But if they don't know you, Jesus, the greatest thing is for a man or a woman or a child to know Jesus. To know you, Lord. To know the power of your resurrection. To know the anointing. To know the victory of the cross of Calvary. Lord, honestly, I, I'm not just saying idle words this morning. I want to love you more than I've ever loved you before. I, I want to worship you more, more than I've ever worshipped you before, my God. I, I want to break through in my life, my God. I want to be able to speak boldly with authority, with conviction, my God. Father, I, you, we are the church. I don't want to be salt that loses its flavour. Lord, we are the salt of the earth and this nation, this city that we belong to needs a move of your Spirit. So God, I ask you to raise us up. Raise us up this morning, my God. Raise us up in the mighty name of Jesus. Raise us up, Father. Raise us up and we'll give you all the praise and we'll give you all the glory. Can we just stand to our feet this morning? If you're in this place today and, and, you, and, and you don't know Jesus, you've never given your life to Jesus, would you give Him your life? Would you give Him your life? Would you say, Jesus, I want to just give you my life today? If that's you today, would you just quickly slip up your hand that I might see it? I'm not going to linger too long. I think a lot of most people here are saved. But just in case, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus or if you've gone away and you want to come back to Jesus, you're not sure whether you're saved, you're not sure where you stand with God, would you just quickly slip up your hand that I might pray with you today? I want to pray with you today, if that's you today. Amen. Amen. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. But I want to just say today, if there's people here today and, and you're, 
and you want a breakthrough in your life and, and you've got to contend. You've got to contend earnestly. You've got to fight for your faith. You've got to fight for what you believe in. You've got to fight. But there's people here that, that might have gone a little bit cold. May, it may not even be that, but, but you, you're loving Jesus to the best of your ability. But something on the inside of you today is saying, Jesus, I want to love you more than I've ever loved you before. I, 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 I don't want to resist you. I, I want to be free to be able to come into your presence. I want to, I want to be free, my God, to, to feel your anointing. I want to be free to receive from you, my God. I want to be free. I, I want to worship you, Lord, more than I've ever worshipped you before. I want a freedom and a liberty in worship that I've never, ever experienced before. I pray, my God, for our music team, that they would have a freedom and a liberty in worship that they've never, ever experienced before. Father, that you'd loosen them and release them in your presence. Father, as a congregation, that we would be released in your presence. God, you inhabit the praises of your people. You, you come into us, my God, through courts of praise and worship. Oh, Father, change us, help us. And if you're in this house today, right now, and you say, Neil, or oh, no, say, God, I, I want to worship you more. I want to know you more. I want to love you more. I want, I want, I want a breakthrough in my life. Would you just quickly sit out of your seat as we sing a song today? Just come and let's pray and let's believe and let's believe for the freedom and the liberty of Jesus to touch us. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah.